Okay, the purpose of this video is going to be to walk you through the steps so that you are able to do the uh, reduction of a force to a resultant force and a wrench. So the first step that you're going to take is to compute both the resultant force and a resultant moment about a point. And so these are the regular formulas where the resultant force is just the sum of all the individual forces applied to the system. This is the sum of vectors. And the resultant moment, say about some point A, is going to be equal to the vector, well, the sum of a vector from point A to the line of action of each of the forces, cross product with each of the forces themselves. So it's each case for each force is a vector from the from point A to the line of action of force I. And so that gives us our two our two things, okay? And so then what we're going to have is at some point A, we're going to have a resultant force. And we're going to have at some arbitrary orientation, we're going to have the resultant moment, just like that. And I'll draw, to, to indicate a moment, I'll draw a little uh, arrow going around it like this. So that's step one. So here you have point A, and there you have the, the two uh, resultants. Okay, so the next step is in the general case. So um, you have a case like this in your homework. In the general case, these are not perpendicular to each other, they're not parallel to each other. So the next step is to decompose the resultant moment, MR, into a part that is parallel to the resultant force. So we'll call that M parallel, so that's just two parallel lines, and a part that is perpendicular to the resultant force, M perpendicular. You do the parallel force first. So to do the parallel force, you're going to do what's called a vector projection of MR onto FR. And so the vector projection is done like this. So that's the parallel component that we want. And so to get the, the projection, you take a dot product between MR and FR. That is going to give you a scalar value and we're going to divide it by the magnitude of FR. That is, this is now a scalar projection, so this isn't right. This is saying a vector is equal to a scalar. So we need to make it into a vector. We want it in the FR direction. So we're going to multiply again. So this is scalar multipl multiplication with a vector. Um, now everything, it's got the right direction, but it has the wrong magnitude. So we need to normalize both the FR. So we divide, we divide it by the magnitude squared. So this now gives us the parallel component. So we can kind of draw that like this. So there is our parallel component of the moment. The second part is to get the perpendicular component. Now, we want the vector sum of the parallel component plus the perpendicular component to be equal to the total resultant moment. So to get the perpendicular component, we just subtract. This is relatively simple to do, like so. And now we will have m perpendicular. OK, so the next step is now this is kind of 2D, we're going to shift it to a 3D image now. So the next step is, so we have now a resultant force, a parallel component, and a perpendicular component. Nothing we do to this resultant force will generate that parallel component, because this force cross with any vector will never give us a vector that's parallel to the force itself. As a cross product, you always get a perpendicular. So we have to live with this. This is going to be the, the couple moment of the wrench. This guy we can get rid of, this perpendicular component, we can get rid of it by shifting FR. But we have to think about this. If we shift FR along its axis, let's start making some unit vectors. So I'm going to call this U1. 
And so u1 is a, is a unit vector in the direction of fr. And I'm going to call this u2. So u2 is a unit vector in the direction of m perpendicular. These two unit vectors are perpendicular to each other. So if we shift fr in the direction of u1, nothing happens because we're shifting the force along its, its uh, line of action due to the principle of transmissibility. That doesn't change anything. That doesn't change the, the, the uh, equivalent force on the system. If we shift fr on u2, we're going to generate a moment perpendicular to m perpendicular. That's not what we want. We want to generate m perpendicular. So we have to compute a third direction, u3, where u3 is perpendicular to u1 and u2. And the way that we're going to do this is just simply by taking a cross product. So we're going to compute direction to shift fr. Oops. And so we're going to compute that as u3. To get, a, to get a vector perpendicular to u1 and u2, we just take the cross product. And that will be a normal vector because u1 and u2 are normal vectors and they're perpendicular to each other. So this is going to make basically like a right-handed coordinate system, u1, u2, u3. And then the shift fr by d is equal to the magnitude of m perpendicular divided by the magnitude of fr. So we're going to shift it a distance d along u3. Okay, And if you look at this, that's going to generate a moment um, in the u perpendicular direction, or the m perpendicular direction, right? Because if you, if you put your hand in the direction of, of m perpendicular, that's going to make a moment the way that my, my fingers are curling. If you shift fr along this direction u3, that's going to generate the same sign of the direction. So the important thing here is that it's u1 cross u2, where u1 is the direction of fr, and u2 is the direction of m perpendicular. If you switch the order of these, you would have to put a negative sign here to get the right the right sense of the, the, the moment. Okay, now that's pretty much it. Um, so we're going to shift. So this is the distance we're going to shift it, but in terms of the vector, we could write d, the vector that we're going to shift fr, is equal to d times u3. Um, now there's one last bit. In the homework problem, in, in the assignment, uh, the current homework assignment, your goal is to compute the location that fr is going to act on a plate, but on the plane of the plate, meaning that in this case the z component has to be uh, equal to zero. So when you do this shift, this u3 direction, it's going to have, generally speaking, a non-zero z component. So this shift may shift your fr, where fr is acting, off of the plate. And so the last step that you can do is you can further shift fr along the one direction that doesn't change anything, along u1, which is the direction line of action of fr. And the way to compute how far to shift it is after you've done this shift, you figure out what the z component of the acting point of force is, and then divide it by the z component of u1. That will tell you how far along z1 you have to, to shift um, so that Let's say the point of action of FR is on the desired plane. So basically, if we sum over, the, if we go over the, the steps, you sum up all your forces, you sum up the moment at some at some arbitrary point A. Uh, you may as well take the origin for all the uh, moment arms acting from each of the individual forces, that gives you the result in force, the result in moment. Step two is you break the result in moment into a part that's perpendicular, a parallel and perpendicular to the uh, result in force. Then you compute the direction to shift the result in force 
which is the cross product of the directions of the resultant force and the perpendicular component of the moment. Then you calculate the distance to shift, which is simply the magnitude of the resultant of the, of the perpendicular resultant moment divided by the magnitude of the resultant force. And the direction of shift is this cross product, the U3. And then lastly, if you want to bring the resultant force into a, a desired plane, you can shift it along its own line of action to eliminate, say, in this case, like the Z component. All right, that's it. Good luck with your homework.